So I was originally going to make a different video this month, but then the computer that I run DOS and Windows 98 on decided to crap out on me. It's a Dell Dimension XPS R400 running a Pentium 2 MMX overclocked to 425 MHz. It has 128 megs of RAM and has also been upgraded with a 3DFX 16 MB Voodoo 3 and Sound Blaster OS64. The issue here ended up being way more of a hassle to fix than it reasonably should have been, and is so specific to this era of Dell desktops that there's very little relevant information available online. So I thought I'd better document it in a video just in case anyone else runs across this same problem in the future. The initial problem that started all this isn't anything too uncommon for a computer of this age. Put simply, it stopped booting. The system did power on, but nothing else would happen beyond that. The power supply was making this weird ticking noise, indicating that it was repeatedly cutting the power and resetting the system before it could get to post. This could be caused by either the PSU itself failing, or a short to ground elsewhere in the system. Considering that this machine was working fine a few weeks ago, and I haven't done anything to it in the meantime, it's probably the former. A hypothesis that's further supported by the horrific noise this thing makes when I plug it into my tester. Either way, I need to swap in a new power supply before I can do anything else with this machine, and this is where things start to get complicated. When I went to unhook the power supply, I found that in addition to the standard ATX motherboard header, this system uses a non-standard auxiliary power connection. Anyone who works on old computers should recognize this secondary connector as an AT power supply header. An actual AT power supply has two of these, called the P8 and P9 headers, which connect side by side to the motherboard power socket. By contrast, the header on this Dell power supply is labeled P7, and uses a completely different pinout than any standard AT header if wire colors are anything to go by. I initially assumed that this extra connector was a short-lived means of getting additional power to the CPU in the days before the standard 4-pin CPU power connection became common. I figured it shouldn't be too difficult to find a Molex to P7 adapter, slap it on a new power supply, and I'd be good to go. Of course, it couldn't possibly be that simple, otherwise you wouldn't be watching this video. Welcome to Power Supply Hell. My initial Google searches for things like P7 power adapter, ATX P7, and P7 CPU power turned up nothing remotely useful. After about 20 minutes of searching, I came across this old web page detailing AT power supply pinouts. And all the way down at the bottom, I found this. A pinout chart for a P10 AT auxiliary connector, with a note reading, proprietary to some Dell socket 5, 7, and 8 motherboards. Now, the system I have uses a slot 1 motherboard, and my connector is labeled P7, but aside from those two things, this P10 connector appears to be exactly what I have on my machine, or at least very close to it. So I put in a search for P10 AT header, and I finally got back some useful results. The main thing I found was a thread on the Dell community forums, where someone else was trying to find a replacement for this exact power supply. The replies in this thread quickly revealed that that might be a bit more difficult than I had assumed. Now I'd actually like to take a minute to thank Dell forum user Speedstep. He's incredibly knowledgeable when it comes to these weird old power supplies, and most of the information I'm about to share comes directly from his replies in that thread. The first thing I learned is that the connector on my power supply is indeed the same P10 connector referenced on that other page. I'm still not sure why mine is labeled P7, but the model number on my unit matches the one referenced in the thread, so I'm not too concerned. The next thing I discovered is that P10 AT adapters for standard ATX power supplies do in fact exist. So, it looks like I just need to get this $10 adapter, then I can swap in a spare power supply and problem solved, right? Well, once again, if it were truly that simple, this would not be video worthy. As it turns out, these adapters won't just work on any old power supply, because the vast majority of power supplies out there have a feature called PFC, or Power Factor Control. Power Factor is, essentially, a measurement of how energy efficient a given electrical device is. Power Factor Control circuitry is designed to increase the power factor of a device, thereby improving its overall energy efficiency. That may be oversimplifying it a bit, but you get the general idea. Power supplies with built-in PFC are usually somewhere between 80 and 95% efficient, depending on design. 
whereas a power supply without PFC will usually only be around 50% efficient. PFC circuitry has been a mandatory feature on all power supplies sold in the European Union for many years now, and as a result, it's very difficult to find an ATX power supply that doesn't have some form of PFC. While this PFC requirement is a very good thing overall, it does create a bit of a problem for my old Dell Dimension here. This computer predates the European PFC requirements, and the stock power supply has no PFC circuitry whatsoever. On most systems, this wouldn't be a problem, but something about the design of this motherboard, and a number of the other ones Dell made around the same time, means that hooking it up to a standard power supply with PFC will cause an electrical fire and fry the whole system. I suspect this has something to do with the way the motherboard draws power from that auxiliary AT connector, but that's just speculation on my part. No matter the reason, it's clear that the only hope I have of fixing this computer is to track down a power supply with no PFC feature, and my options for that these days are quite limited. The first option is just to get an exact replacement of the power supply that failed. I don't really want to do that though, as these units are cheaply made and are over 20 years old now. Any replacement I get is likely to fail the same way this one has, probably within a few years. That's not to mention that these things are in short supply, and most of the prices online reflect that. I could get myself a whole other Pentium 2 desktop for the asking price of a lot of these. The other option is to get a standard ATX power supply with no PCF feature and put one of these adapters on it. That's almost as difficult as getting an OEM power supply, because I was only able to find a list of about half a dozen specific models from around the same time this computer was made that I could actually verify as not having PFC. I have very little doubt that newer non-PFC power supplies exist, but I have just as little doubt that they're all bottom-of-the-barrel crap that I wouldn't trust to power a calculator, likely made by no-name Chinese companies who aren't going to be too eager to advertise their lack of compliance with European efficiency guidelines. Luckily, someone at computer accessory company StarTech saw this problem coming, and sometime in the early 2000s they started making brand new power supplies specifically for Dell computers like mine. Theoretically, this is the best option, but unfortunately they only produced these for a couple years, and now they're even harder to find than the OEM units. Now, I love this computer. It's actually one of my favorite ones I have, so I absolutely don't mind spending a bit of money to keep it up and running. But at this point, I'm still not 100% sure the power supply is the sole issue. There is a non-zero chance that the root problem is actually a short circuit, and even if that's not the case, it's entirely possible that the power supply damaged something when it failed. On any other system, I would hook up a spare PSU to make sure things are still in working order before I'd even consider buying a replacement, but that's just not an option here. That means that any replacement power supply I buy is inherently a bit of a gamble, as I have no idea if it'll actually be able to bring this machine back from the dead. Not wanting to potentially waste more money than I had to, I went with the cheapest option for a replacement power supply I could find, which ended up being an OEM unit from the one eBay seller whose prices weren't completely absurd. A generic, non-PFC power supply would have been a bit cheaper on its own, but once you factor in the cost of the AT adapter, this one beats it out. Alright, it's been 3-5 to five business days, and I've got the new power supply here. So let's open it up and get it installed. First impressions of this unit are quite good. It's in excellent physical condition, and most of the Molex headers still have their protective caps. The way these cables are wrapped makes me wonder if this thing has ever been used. It was sold as used, but it's probably in the best condition you could hope to find a power supply like this in these days. So A plus there. Now to get it installed. Unfortunately, my camera battery died during the power supply install, so fast forward to it being done. I've got the tower set up here on my very messy workbench, and now it's time for the moment of truth. Alright, it powers on. And now it's running check disk. And it's stuck here and I can't continue because I don't actually have a keyboard connected. That's fine though, it still seems to work so I'm just gonna power it off and go hook it up in the other room so I can give it a proper test. Alright, so everything is set back up and it all seems to still work.
I captured some footage of Midtown Madness running in hardware accelerated mode at max settings, so all appears to be well. That being said, I still don't consider my power supply issue to be entirely fixed. The new PSU is the same make and model as the one it replaced, so I fully expect it to fail sometime within the next 10 years. Even if I were to get a hold of one of those StarTech power supplies, it would only be a few years newer than this one, so I wouldn't expect it to last much longer. In fact, every power supply option I've gone over in this video is a stopgap solution that will most likely result in another failure somewhere down the line. And when that happens, there's a chance it could take some other component down with it. I count myself extremely lucky that this particular failure doesn't seem to have damaged anything, because I've got some kind of valuable hardware in here that I'd prefer to keep working. I won't consider this issue to be truly resolved until I can drop a brand new ATX power supply into this machine and be reasonably assured that it won't fry anything. That's actually part of the reason I made this video. My hope is that someone watching this who has a bit more electronics expertise than myself can help me come up with a more permanent solution that doesn't involve outright replacing the motherboard. I've looked everywhere, and I still don't have an adequate explanation as to why PFC power supplies kill these motherboards, much less how to prevent it. In the meantime, I do have a solution that works, and I hope that someone else finds the information in this video useful in keeping their own retro PC going. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked the video, be sure to give it a like and maybe consider subscribing, or leaving a comment, or anything else. Just engage with the video, because YouTube seems to like that. Other than that, I think that's everything. Bye.